welcome to Justice Serve Daily. Thank God you cannot hear backstage for the first <laughs> for the first 15 minutes because we were all uh, losing our minds in there, and we probably still will. So I'll warn you about that right now. Um, but uh, today I got the uh, panel group up here. My uh, uh, Justice Warrior Research Group. So I've got Miss Paige is on from Wales. Hi. Hello. And Mama Bear. And Miss Kelt. Hey, guys. Um, and although to our request, because we were talking about how hot outside is, some of us may or might not be naked. So we'll just share that out front right now. <laughs> <laughs> they made me do it. They made me do it. Oh, oh. Kelt was complaining of how hot it was where she is. And we're like, well, just take off your clothes and get in a cold tub. <laughs> there you go. And, and you guys started we, we tried to explain to her that's how we're all doing the show. We don't know how. Uh, <laughs> um, Please forgive us. Do you guys see what they yes. do to me? Great you visual I mean representation. It, to is, stop. it is. So if you're new, like, hi, Miss Kathy Parker, who's new to the channel. Welcome to Justice Serve Daily. Uh, we are uh, going a little crazy here. Um, but I see Polygraph and Jinx and everybody and Shane. Hello. Hello. Um, but yes, we were sitting here and as we're trying to prep and get ready for what we normally call a casual show, but we kind of don't do anything very casual as we kept doing more and more research and we're like, should we do, we bring this up yet? Can we bring this up yet? You know, so we're trying to find that all, but um, so Shane is obviously naked as well. Shane says we're all naked. Um, when in Rome, thank good. Thank you for joining in, Shane. We appreciate your participation. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna die here. We, <laughs> we want everybody to feel comfortable when you're in the show. So there you go. <laughs> so anyway. Um, we are glad you guys are here. We've got some stuff we wanted to talk about for, um, the Delphi case and forgive us the last couple of days we have been, um, like researching, doing more researching, finding some more stuff on all kinds of things right now. And then also obviously for this show, but, uh, sometimes we need a comic relief and, um, obviously we're experiencing one right now to go through. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, what we're talking about. yes, absolutely. So we are glad to have you, um, Kathy, Kathy Parker says, thanks. I think she's not quite sure about it yet. Ladies. <laughs> she's like, uh, might have come real, to the wrong really place. Good, we're really Sorry, good. Kathy. Kathy, we swear we, we just, uh, we get just those kind of losing it over. But so, yeah, we wanted to, um, come on and share some information with you guys. Let me, um, jump in here to be able to, uh, share screen and let me put this here um and i will go and pop this up real quick um to be able to show you guys uh this stuff and start discussion with you let me make sure so um, we thought that we would kind of go through some information um, regarding the case and, and have some of our reaction because we can't hold back when we are talking about this stuff originally. And sometimes we like to be able to try to go on live a, a little bit more casual. This is kind of, I guess, semi-casual here. Um, we're, we're, going to have some slides, which normally I, I try to not make it too formal while we're just kind of discussing, um, you know, we'll tell you the difference between when we have uh, solid proof, whatever of stuff, or whether it's maybe our thought process or in our opinions or any type of speculation that may go on. Um, and honestly, some stuff that if we just don't have enough 
to a hundred percent bring it to you, we don't bring it to you because we don't want to bring wrong information to any of you guys. And um, one of the things that we really wanted to talk about um, is the Richard Allen coming forward um, and uh, what what we learned and stuff um, from that reading. So, I mean, we all knew that we were, everybody was pretty much in shock um, that we were like, okay, how the heck did we find out about Richard Allen so late in the game when we find out that he had come forward, um, you know, early on for obvious reasons, uh, you know, it wasn't him coming out of the goodness of his heart. He really kind of had to um, come forward because we all know that there were witnesses who saw him and he knew those witnesses saw him obviously because he even identified the witnesses when he gave his statement. So um, I wanted to pull this up and let me see if I can get this out of the way, if it'll move correctly. There it goes. Um, so right here, again, I just showed you, this is coming from uh, the defense team is trying to argue that the prop, the prosecution, the police, just did not have enough information to move forward uh, in probable cause to be able to arrest Richard Allen and to search his house. And so part of that information that's in there um, shows in that uh, probable cause affidavit that on sub September 21st of 2022, so let's keep that in mind. This is on September 21st. So Detective Liggett, who was provided, now let's, let's focus on this. He's provided a tip narrative from Orion. Den, and then it's C000074-01. to review. Okay. And that it was from the DNR, Lieutenant Dan Dolan. And then it has the narrative as follows. So, um, as you can tell, well, maybe you can't or not, but in the documents itself, in part of the probable cause affidavit, when they pull information from someplace else, you can tell that the uh, wording is, all, you know, it's like a screenshot. They basically, they take the screenshot of that information, and they drop it in there. They do not retype it. They do not redo anything of it. In the probable cause affidavits, when they pull up information from other sources, they will drop it in the document. So this is when it goes where that Mr. Allen was on, blah, 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 blah. So, um, and then we also wanted to point out when we talk about this, that um, Richard Allen's cell phone did not have, did not list an IMEI, but did have an MEID. Now, way back when, when we talked about the um, cell phones before, we described what IMEI is and MEID. We're not going to go as deep as we did before, but we do have that information. But I want to talk to you guys about the Orion system um, really quick and let you know uh, what information we know, what information we have um, in regards to that. Um, did you guys want to say anything at all about what we, you know, about that document first before I go into the Orion description? Um, no, you probably don't want me to. I just saw the weirdest thing. No, can I say it, please? <laughs> I, I got to think. Oh, if I God. Here for a minute. No, wait a minute. Let's see. Yes or no. Ooh. I know. Just, just tell me if I understand this right. And uh, mute me if you don't want me to say it. <laughs> it says here, his cell phone did not list an IMEI, but did have the following. They looked at his cell phone when? They make it sound like they looked at it when they uh, right when they were taking the. Uh, well, they the they stick. found it right, and they listed the phone number in the document. Mm. Am I correct? 
I don't know. That's weird. Okay, I'll shut up now. Go away. Janie? Yeah, it, it, it has it in there. Hold on, let me scroll backwards. Oops, wrong way. Oops, too far. Okay, so the information that they're showing is showing that they are saying he does not have an IMEI, which I guess jumping ahead, if we talk IMEI, IMEI means that they can trace you. They can't trace you with not an IMEI. That is traceable. And back on um, old phones, which some some countries and stuff that we found, if you do not have an IEMI, those are illegal in some countries to not have an IEMI on your phone and the MDI. But you're correct. The writing of this talking about that is already in this information. Why would they do that? Because remember, they Kelt, they searched to see who every phone number that would ping in that area during that time, right? That it would have a number, but it doesn't have an I I M E I. Do you get what I'm saying? They did take uh, it. He did take it. Yes, they did take it. <laughs> They did take this info at the time that he spoke to him because they would have to account that he was one of the people there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it does. I get what you're saying. I'm just being a pain in the butt. Sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> the I the IMEI phone being missing is what burner phones are famous for. That's why people who are doing illegal activities use burner for, for, phones from, right? So that was the reason that they would sit there and do that. You can buy those phones. I don't know. For example, Walmart sells those types of phones. You can buy those like crazy, right? You could get those phones that had no IMEI. So you could have that burner phone. And who worked at Walmart. Yep. And he did work at Walmart. Just, just, just saying. Okay. So, so this is information that we got. So um, the Orion system had been used and started for different reasons to track different ca cases. They also, law enforcement will also use it for event planning. Okay. That um, was an example that was given that it was used for some instances for the um, DC sniper. Um, it was also anybody from Indiana that knows the A April Tinsley case, um, which was a cold case that took a very long time to solve um, out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Orion's system was used um, for that case as well. So, um, what the Orion system is used and, and been around is it stands for Operational Response and Investigative Online Network. So it gives FBI and partners real-time online network to quickly and effectively coordinate efforts um, in a crisis situation. So no matter how many law enforcement or wh whoever people are, that, that are gathering all of this information, specifically used also for tip lines, right? We had tip lines that were going on. And remember when Delphi first launched, although the police were saying, we believe it's somebody from Delphi, we believe it's somebody who knows Delphi, used to work in Delphi, used to live in Delphi and all of this. Remember, stuff was going out all across the country. There were billboards all across the country that were posted up. And so all of this info was going out. So that way, if it would expand anywhere, that they would have info that would come in. So let me give an example. And now I won't even remember his name and I'm going to say it. Um, the guy busted in Colorado. Somebody help me with that one. Um, the one who, who got, the, he was a person on a trail. He was from Indiana. 
He has a history of um, uh, oh, yeah, the axe guy assault uh, in Indiana. He was registered. Daniel Pearson. Pies and yeah, no, and he's no, no not. Um, what are you talking no, about? He's the guy with the axe that attacked people right. with an axe. He was Colorado. on a trail. Yep. So, so when you sit here and all of a sudden, um, Daniel Nations. Thank you, Fig. And hey, hello, Fig. That's his How name. Um, uh, yeah, I thought the I thought our chat would know that. So when Daniel Nations is entered in the system, and they have similarities, a guy from Indiana, he took off. He was hiding. He was wanted. He sat here and and you know attacked somebody on the trails in the woods. So all of a sudden, that information and stuff would come forward. So if it expands out there, all of a sudden, that's why this tip will come forward, and you'll hear about it. So uh, it had automatic features. So like when a phone tip is entered into the system, Orion can actively process that data and then it pushes leads up forward um, into the investigation. So they gave an example. So if a, a phone tip is received in an LA office about a person in Boston who could be a suspect in a nationwide terrorism case, that information is entered into Orion and then it's reviewed in the LA, right? And then it's then, let, let, me, let me focus on this point for everybody. It's reviewed in LA and then it's instantly routed electronically to Boston agents for action. So then they forward that information, then they share that information. It still has to be reviewed by somebody, right? It still has to, to be brought forward. Um, so it'll help stimulate all of that info. So um, it does automatic searches. If any new information is entered into the system, um, it can locate matching people, locations, vehicles, you know, and then it does, you know, events and that type of thing. So um, the matches are shown to Orion and it's used as a tool to help the investigators connect the dots in the case. So remember, FBI is brought in right away for this case when the girls are, are missing. So, um, you know, this is supposed to be designed for uh, large cases that are going to have multi people involved in it to get it. I mean, it even talks that law enforcement uses it for, you know, Super Bowl and stuff like that. So that if they have somebody that is a possible threat that's going to come up, then it'll all fall to them using this system. So, um, oh, I want to get out of this for I can show you guys something totally different. Sorry, this is not in power. I didn't want to put this in PowerPoint because of the, um, the way the document is. Let me pull this up here. And see if you guys can see this. And let me enlarge it a little bit better. So this is like a total different um, case, but I wanted to show this to everybody. Um, it, it shows of the Department of Justice using the Orion system. Um, it talks about critical incident report. It talks about people being certified. Um, you know, whether they have to be certified, those types of things. Um, and it goes through basically the description, again, the description of Orion, um, facilitating the FBI and the, uh, accurate and fast and reliable information that is supposed to be put into the system and deployed quickly so that they can basically capture a suspect. And um, again, every the different agencies have access to it because of that. Federal, state, local level, they give access to be able to put stuff in the system so that they can find it. Um, this goes through more of here again. This is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, it has where it implements. Here it talks about where federal, state, and local agencies um, the system provides support and services 
to critical incidents, command post, and joint operations. So that way, the inquiry is coming up. It's managing that stuff. It should be pulling up these tips of what's entered into the system. Um, was looking more in your, they're really very rare that they would let anything at all ever be deleted from that system. Then they have people who have the master uh, input and stuff from the system to be able to pull these records out and to be able to look at what is pulling forward. Now, the reason that I wanted to go and look at this whole Orion system and what this means is because as we look in there, again, back at the um, original info that suddenly even the defense team is like, well, wait a minute. How did you guys go back to Richard Allen? Which was the same question I think anybody following the Delphi case asked, right? Anybody who had the Delphi uh, thing was asked. Um, they were like, how the hell did we have this back in 2017? And and nobody thought of anything. Nobody thought of this. So to really emphasize that here on September 21st, we are learning that for some reason, at this point, a tip narrative... OK, the tip narrative came from the Orion system. OK, so then we go into. Asking the question. Why did it not pull up Richard Allen earlier? Was it entered immediately into the system? Now, it's going to pull multiple in things. So so I will say, let's give an example, throw this out there. If a million people are saying it's Ron Logan and a million people are calling in, okay, that's maybe too many. A hundred people are saying it's Ron Logan. I'll go down. A <laughs> hundred people are saying it's Ron Logan. And all of a sudden, we have... Ron Logan is going to be pulled up in the Orion system. Does that make, does that make sense? So like if you, they are entering every tip, right? They're entering every tip. They enter who's nearby. They enter who's on the property. They enter who's mm -hmm. all in this stuff. So all of a sudden, if you start getting people who are all calling in a Ron Logan, Ron Logan's tip is going to come forward. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. So um, he's going to come forward. So if a, if a Chadwell it is entered in there and people start going, hey, is it Chadwell? And you enter mm -hmm. it in the system. Mm -hmm. It's going to push itself forward. It's going to push itself forward as new leads, as people continue. And remember how many thousands of thousands of tips that came in from freaking everywhere. And yep. all of these go in there. So if you have a Richard Allen interview and we and we don't we don't know this for sure so this is where the stuff in there the the worry comes into did it get pushed back because you only have one Richard Allen comment did mm -hmm. it get entered right on time was it entered in our time right right so you know then we sit here and we go look at Obviously, the DNR officer, which we're going to talk about him, um, is is stating, hey, by the way, this guy doesn't have an IMEI. You can't tell where he's located over here or over there because he doesn't have an IMEI. It, he's pointing that out, but he mm -hmm. is pointing out the the other the other stuff so the phone at the time now i would be interested and now that i say that now i think i should have checked it before we came on um i need to go back and look at the list of devices that they collected from him and see if any of them have that m e i d number i don't remember if they listed it i don't i think they listed description they may have not listed m e i d i'm pretty sure they said they found that on one device right but it, it had that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so think about this. So you've got, so we've got this info and again, we did a show before about IMEIs and MEIDs. I actually, I think the show we did on that was when we did it about um, Keegan Klein's phones. And that was because when they talked Mm -hmm. about what phones that Keegan Klein had and what he didn't have with them and what was here. And and they were talking about IMEI numbers and MEID numbers at the time. And we had done some research and stuff on that. So we, we not going deep down in there again. Um, We can, if you guys want to hear all that stuff of all is wonderful. But so when you look at that, it talks about that this number is able to identify. It's got the markers on it that you can locate it. Why does it have it on there? If you ever know that an uh, an IMEI is, I lost my iPhone, I want to find where the heck it is, and that's what will help you locate where your phone is located. Otherwise, you're not. Burner phone's popular to do that. So this is what I uh, wanted to show you guys also as an example of the um, IMEI and the numbers of where you go and you get your phone. You're going to have both of those on there. Most providers will not let you have a cell phone service if you do not have um, an IMEI number for it. They're not going to let you. I have a question. Go ahead. I have a question I don't think anyone knows the answer to. There's a couple people in chat that might know. When did they check his phone for these numbers? I don't think any of us know because it looks like it's indented with the statement, right? No, it's part of the statement. It's the same yeah. font. It is the same font. Yeah. So he when did, did they find it. this out? He, when he took, he had to get it from him at that time. Oh, okay. Good Do you point. see that? Yeah. If you look back at that font, that font is all indented. That is the indent of the screenshot of information when he gave it to the DNR officer. So the DNR officer did take that. He had to, Kelt, because think about it. The original search of who is around here, they were trying to see what phones were pinging within that area, right? So they they would have to know, hey, whose phone number pinged here and here and here, right? So we know where Ron Logan's phone was. We know where this guy's phone is. And this person was pinging off that tower and this person pinging off the tower. So the reason he would, the DNR officer would capture it would have to be, and that's why he's pointing out there's no IMEI. So think about that. He doesn't have a phone that's going to show direct location. It would show, it would show it. The phone would be in use if you have the phone, but it's not going to sit here and let you, locate a non-registered phone. A throwaway phone is non-registered. You're not going to show it. It doesn't have the IMEI on the phone. Which is basically described as like a social security number for your phone. Right. Samantha, yes, they, they, they have to have nowadays, and I, I looked up the stuff because there are some laws in some countries, they will not allow any phones without IMEIs to be sold whatsoever. If the phone is capable of having an SD card that they sit here, they can sit there and sell you. But if you go buy a phone that it's IMEI, it doesn't have one, it is hard for providers, and at least in the information that we looked up, um, today, it did say that most providers, because they can't trace if some of it is stolen, may not give you service on that phone. And also, if you put, purchased it online instead of purchasing it through the service provider, it's it's basically you're on your own, too. You know, God forbid it was stolen also. So. Yep, Tom, it would show if the phone would be in use. But if somebody, but if you don't have an IMEI to track you and your phone is not registered because it is a throwaway, they're not going to know who you are anyway. They won't find you. So, uh, you know, and again, we're sitting here discussing why and how 
did this September 21st thing supposedly jump out in front of them now? Yeah. This so so why why did all of a sudden this tip narrative from Orion? They're saying it came from Orion. So if we discussed about okay, let what if a phone call came in and yeah. somebody said, uh, I think it's Richard Allen. Okay, they're yeah. gonna tell us in this probable cause, and th and this is not the this is the this is the prosecutor's response to the prop to the probable cause where the defense is arguing you did not have enough information in order for you to go question Richard Allen, get go arrest Richard Allen, and for you to go search Richard Allen. You there was no there wasn't enough probable cause for you. Well if they had received a phone call tip, then they would have phone call tip in here. Right? Yeah, because it would only help their case by putting that in there. Because that was my question before, is I did wonder whether the statement was in the Orion system this whole time, but it took a tip about Richard Allen to obviously push that statement to the attention of law enforcement. But like you just said, if that was the case, it would have been only beneficial for them to include that here. Right. And they would have to tell the, they would have to, they would want, they, one, they have to tell defense how, right? They have to tell defense how and why, because they, they are arguing for the, for the judge goal to not throw out all of the info that was got, that was taken during the search and the reason for going back to see him. Although you could argue the fact that when they sat here and finally go out and go get Richard Allen, what does he do? He sits down, they have Richard Allen, they have his wife, they separate him, they start talking to them. And Richard Allen, again, says the same stuff all over to him again, right? He's telling them, Yep, I was there. I was there this time to this time. Yes, I drove this. Yes, I was wearing this. Yes, I would blah, 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 blah. And then after that discussion, then we got Ligon who sits here and goes, okay, well, in the probable cause affidavit, I believe we're going to find the following, which is how he worded it, which I thought was, I don't know, I, I didn't think it was the best written probable cause affidavit, um, but here nor there, uh, where he's saying, okay, well, I think I'm going to find the jacket, the, you know, the jeans, the, the, the boots, right? The car, I'm going to find this at his house. So that is my probable cause for me to go in there. So we've got this here. So what, before I move, uh, we go with more DNR stuff. Um, ladies, your thoughts. On what stuff on of this information on it being found on the um, on yeah, the being on Orion system. I think I just have more questions like everyone else does at this point, where we are all wondering how if this statement was taken in 2017 and apparently collected into this Orion system. How is it only in 2022 that it was stumbled across by Tony Liggett? You know, it's just still confusing to me. You guys think it's pretty much academic how this tip came up? And the point would be that, for, well, yeah, but they, they had to have a reason to bring them in. And that's what we're trying to figure out. But is that... Does bringing him in matter when they were writing this request for a for a search warrant? That's I don't know if this is. Yeah, I think they could have written the request for a search warrant, even though they didn't have the Orion part. Maybe I think so. What do you guys think? I think that's the reason that they justified. Um, if you look here. This is the beginning of what he just how he justified to go in there. So the affidavit for the search warrant that was done. 
So he swears and affirms that he believes and has good cause to believe that the evidence related to the crime of the murder and violation of Indiana crime, blah, 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 is located at the residence of Richard Allen, date of birth, blah, blah, blah. Um, he believes that the evidence in the form of a handgun, 40 caliber, because uh, remember, they ask about if he had guns, knives, Blue sweatshirt, jacket, black sweatshirt, jackets, clothing, electronic devices, and a cell phone with phone number, and they list it, and any other cell phones used by Richard Allen will be located on the property. And so that was part, and then it goes into the full details of the girls who saw, saw him, him saying he saw the girls all of the info he admitted to. Now, um, for me, in my opinion, I still believe that there's a Keegan Klein connection. And I know anybody who watches, that's mm -hmm. watched any of the shows that I have, it's because you can't erase that the police came forward and stated that an Anthony Schatz profile was speaking to Libby. And now, is it somebody else using Anthony Schatz? Of course it can be. But the creator of the Anthony Schatz profile was Keegan Klein. Keegan yes. Klein used to speak to teenage girls to get images and stuff before he ever created Anthony Schatz. And he used his normal Keegan Klein and met girls and talked to girls and talked to them as Keegan Klein until July of 2016, which is when he first created the Anthony Schatz account. Then he started communicating with the girls. And as we know, they believe there was more than one voice speaking to the girls using the Anthony Schatz account. So, the search, I wholeheartedly believe that the search, which we do know was supposed to be Delphi related, that's confirmed. We do know it was because of Keegan Klein. Although whatever Keegan Klein was telling them that was supposed to be found there in whatever connection to Delphi, they didn't find anything. So they didn't believe nor could they confirm anything that Keegan Klein was telling those guys. At first, I thought, man, this is too coincidental. It's too, it's too close together. Why, why would they search six weeks, especially on the banks of a river that gets cleaned every damn year by people with picked up from garbage and everything that's picked up every year, yet they're going out there to go look for something that he is saying is in there and somehow in relation to it. We have speculated many a time. I have a few thoughts of what it could be, but but when it comes to Richard Allen, this whole Orion and the system coming up just, I don't know. It just, it seems, it seems too easy that before we had tens of thousands of tips, you had the Richard Allen statement. Right. That was early. How did that not come forward? Was it not shared? Was it not entered in the system? Was it was it late? Was it put in the system late? Was it sitting on a desk and then somebody else entered it into the Orion system? Did somebody prevent it from getting put into the Orion system? You know that it just kind of doesn't really. I, for me, it just kind of really doesn't pass the smell test. That uh, that's just my personal opinion. Ladies. I don't think we'll ever back. know, but I'm sorry, Mom Bear. I think there's gonna be a date on the entry date. So if they use this as a learning opportunity. They can go back into Orion and they probably have it in the metadata. Like when was it entered? But we'll never see that. But but hopefully someone sees it and learns. 
But I, uh, but the odd of that, that of all people that legit sees it is just, I don't know. But the fact that nobody, I don't know, knowing the information back in 2017 and nobody coming forward with the information, you know, that he was spoken to prior to this happening, obviously, in 22 of the arrest. I mean, I, I hate to say you go back to good old fashioned police work, you know, forget the Orion system, start going back to facts and basic police work at whatever level, you know, in my opinion. But. Well, I mean, that's kind of important because, I mean, Mama Bear, you were a, a work for police dispatch and you know that, you know, regardless of whatever tools and stuff that they need, I mean, you would still think, I don't care what has to be entered in a system anywhere, that that how did Richard Allen not come to the front when he immediately says that he's there at the times it all happens? You don't rely on a system. And that's, to me, basically, you know, where the ball was dropped here, potentially, or like you said before, someone didn't enter it, you know, was sitting on someone's desk, whatever happened. But still, someone knew that Richard Allen was spoken to. Right. Right. You know this, obviously. And, yeah. And, and but, sorry to butt in, but like, I have no, to, okay. I have to also wonder as well, like, if Richard Allen's statement was taken from the perspective of him being a witness, why wasn't it put together with other witness statements taken? You know, and we we wonder whether the first sketch was created from a witness account. So, like, why didn't they have Richard Richard's statement if it was a witness account? You know what I mean? Right. Well, because he made sure too, though. Remember what he said. I saw nothing. I didn't pay attention if there were cars parked in there. Remember, I didn't pay attention to car if cars were parked in the in the parking lot. I didn't look up. I was looking at the stock stocks on my phone. Uh, I really can't describe the girls very well who I saw. He's acting like he saw nobody and saw nothing. So that's why he wasn't listed as a witness to talk to anymore. Because basically yeah. he told he tells yeah, in his own awesome. testimony, I, I didn't see anything. Yep. I didn't see any yeah. I didn't see any girls. Reflecting from himself as much as he can. Yep, I didn't yep. see girls, I didn't see cars, I didn't see anything. Hmm. Yep. Like I said, you still go back to the beginning, you know. You don't wait how many years later to find out information that was, you know, there all along regardless. Yeah. Well, I mean, also the thing is, is you how you can't ignore this Orion system, though, right? Mm -hmm. Like if if this is pulling out information, if it is if it literally is pulling out the lead information to you, it's pulling out the tips forward. OK. Yeah. Do, do the other tips that come in that grow over time and you get the same tips like the like the Ron Logans, the Kurtz, right? All these other people. If you have all of this other in there, does it skew the leads that are being pulled forward? Could have it not popped up only because more tips were being tipped in on other people than they were on Richard Allen. But for that many years, I'm just saying that many years, you're saying that it would be, you know, the tips would be putting that back further and further and further. Because Rich, think yeah. about it. Richard Allen isn't listed as a, he's not listed as a tip in this document is listing him as being present at, at as, as being like everybody else. I was there at the scene. He right. wasn't listed as a tip. Exactly. The DNR yeah. officer entered that as, hey, he's there. He said this. I didn't see anything. I didn't see cars. I think one of the girls had brown hair. 
Some were taller than the others. He was very generic in his description. Very, I mean, just very generic. Didn't see anything. Didn't look in the parking lot. Didn't look, oh, I parked near the Farm Bureau building. Totally not naming that of, of what people call it a CPS building. He lives freaking in Delphi. He knows what everybody referred that building to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. He totally said it was a different building on purpose. I mean, he's from the area, for heaven's sakes. He's a local. Hello, Aspen. I did notice, Vic. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Samantha. Sorry, we're yapping and keeping in there. We're trying to keep an eye. Butterfly kisses. Yeah, I, I. that's part of the problem. He did not, they did not look. Um. Yeah, Tom, he, in the description, I think I still even have the whole thing up here. Let me see if I've got it when he talks about the description of the um, girls. So what are, you, what are you guys thinking about the phone? I mean, wouldn't that make it a little suspect there too? I mean, I'm just saying about, hey, by the way, he has a phone and it doesn't have, uh, it, it, you can't track it. All right, so here, oh no, that's right. That's not the one I want. I, can I say something? Please. Uh, again, I'm, I, and I'm sorry if I'm skipping ahead, but I, you know, I got to come back to the fact that, you know, we have Richard Allen who has admitted not once, not twice, not three times, but, you know, five, six times that he has admitted from his own mouth on the phone, on tape, you know, that he has done it. That's still a huge issue for the defense to get out from under, period. That came from his mouth. He has admitted it. Um, so, you know, I know all this and we're what we're going through and stuff, and I, you know, I don't you know I, how I feel about all the information and stuff. Um, but it really comes down to the fact that he has admitted it. You know, really, that stands, you know, all on its own. So here we see that uh, the investigators talked that they interviewed three of the four girls who were on the trails that day. Um, and then when it goes down farther... Then that's where he says in the statement again, he parked at the old Farm Bureau building. He walked to the new Freedom Bridge. While at the Freedom Bridge, he saw three females. He noted one was taller and had brown or black hair. He did not remember description, nor did he speak with them. Well, they did speak to him and he didn't say anything. He walked from the Freedom Bridge to the High Bridge. He did not see anybody although stated he was watching a stock ticker on his phone as he walked. He stated there were ve there were vehicle, this is how they worded it, not how I'm reading it. He stated there were vehicle parked at the high bridge trail uh, head. However, he did not pay attention to them. He did not make any phone or video, photos or videos. His cell phone did not list an IMEI. So then that's it. I mean, that is the total capture of somebody who they're not, again, we got to remember, this is entered in the Orion system, not as a tip. It wasn't, the DNR person was not listing um, Richard Allen as a tip. He, they were listing as almost like he's present too. He didn't see anything. He wasn't paying attention. He's looking at his phone. He didn't look at the cars. He doesn't even remember the girls, that, you know, and then they, but they identify in this probable cause affidavit when they're talking further that now it's the girls who they believe he saw that was Richard Allen, especially the one girl who saw Richard Allen. That is who they saw walking. 
And I, in, and in my opinion, I feel like the one thing we haven't heard of um, is, you know, do we know that a photo wasn't put in front? Because I do remember hearing one of the suspects a long time ago that came forward that they were trying to um, say that it could be him just because of his similarity and look and that they had talked about the eyewitness said that wasn't him. Like that they, they knew that that wasn't him said was not, not the person. So I would have to imagine it's still possible out there that they also went and showed, Hey, this is Richard Allen. Is this him? And you know, it could be that then she also identified him. I just thought of something. Oh, for six, for six years, those girls saw, nah, never mind. I was going to say they saw the picture of bridge guy being on the TV and on boards and everything like that. And none of them ever said, hey, that's the guy we saw when we were walking past. Maybe they just thought, hey, the the police know they talked to us and they would handle it. That's all. I'm, that's all I'm throwing out there. It's another one of those. Why not? It's another one of those. What ifs and why not? You know? Yep. Yep. So. I will say that we we have talked about a little bit about I'll go back over here to this thing. We have talked about um, the DNR officer. We have talked about uh, research that we did back before his name finally got thrown out there and revealed. Um, and um, hmm. I'm trying to think how appropriately to say this. Uh, um, hmm. Okay, so the DNR officer, I'll let Mama Bear start. The DNR officer is still involved in the Delphi community, correct, Mama Bear? Oh, she had to go. Yeah, she was having oh, a, a situation she had to leave. Uh -oh. Hopefully she'll come back. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Paige, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, that we, sure. that we found him. Um, we do well. I won't say we found him. We knew where he was, but we um, there's some information that we have. We did some research on um, DNR officers and trying to find um, information out about mm -hmm. uh, the situation originally, what happened, um, because uh, in our opinion there would be a high possibility and chance that um, the DNR officer um, knew the Allens. Let's, I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, and he is still in the, uh, he, he was very popular of other cases that happened in Indiana. And, um, of yeah. finding bodies quite a uh, prominent person yes he uh was one for a four-year-old um who was um swept away in delphi and went um they were trying to look for this little girl and um she was not found right away and when was this this one was, I'm going to go pop this, I'm going to pop this out for I can go pull it up uh, out of our Discord thing here. I think you said 2015. Yeah, we, well, we have a 2015 body that was found um, and in, Deer have, Creek. And, in Deer Creek. Then we have the, that was a 25, 2015 case he did. Then we have the four-year-old. Um, and then we have the last case that he did that was in there was 2022 when he was still the lieutenant um, for DNR before mm -hmm. he got promoted. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 one of the things I just found a little odd when we were uh, looking at it, guys, was just really kind of the creepy stuff of... Um, that when they were looking for the four-year-old, they made everybody kind of go home and were like, we'll come back later 
when uh, it's daylight and the wording and yes. stuff from that that was done to the media was a little bit odd to me. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Yep. That's what to, I said. I'm going to try to pull oh. this so, up. Yeah, basically, it was very familiar. And we that's read why a similar statement in regards to Delphi where they exclaimed that they wouldn't continue the search after nightfall for the safety because of, of people getting hurt. The officers and everything. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. let me share this now. I can share this. So, yeah, we found three cases of their that he was involved with. They were all um, search and rescue of bodies. And um, let me go back. Don't leave me. Uh, was it this one? There it is. Am I still sharing my screen, hopefully? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the Deer Creek still missing. This is the four-year-old. Um and it has um, Dolan's comment in here. And then when they interview him. And it talks about for people to. Uh, wait and come back the next day. Which I, I don't know why, but it was pretty haunting to me to read it. Yeah, when it's. A four-year-old, like, even for a 13 and a 14-year-old, I think it was kind of shocking for people to, to realize that they did call off the search. But for a four-year-old, yeah, it's quite, it's even more shocking. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on this uh, comments. French. Ron Logan, PCA, stated the girls were dropped off at 1 p.m. Last phone ping from Libby's phone was 2.13. Phone pinged 1.2 miles north of M.H. Beer near Muir Cemetery. Uh, well, the girls were dropped off just a little bit after one o'clock. So, um, we do a timeline video that talks about the exact times. Actually, we're also going to go do a, an update and stuff from it. Sorry, guys, I'm, <laughs> I have this up here instead of the case. Um, I believe so it was around 1.30 they were dropped off. Yeah. Yeah, and 2.13 was the last uh, time that a, a photo and stuff was taken, not the last time the phone was pinged. There was another ping and stuff for the phone, and then after that, it, it was gone. So um, let me pull up the other case. That was in here too. Or was that it? I don't want to pull up the wrong one. That was the four year old boy. Here it is. This is the other one. This one was the um, 2019 case. Why are there so many ads come up? I'm just irritated. You can see here. Can you guys see it? Actually, I'm not sure if you can. Um, Lieutenant Dan Dolan, Indiana Department of Natural Resources, said children of Riley Park called Carroll County around 6 p.m. After they saw the boy enter the water in Deer Creek before it swept, swept away. Uh, then it talked about that the officers that can... Um, Conservation officers arrived and began searching, but the boy had not been found. Dolan said officers will continue to search 
until it becomes too dark and dangerous for them to continue. And Here's then an interesting it said, question. The, oh, the, search, the search was suspended at dark Thursday evening. So when it became dark, they stopped looking for the four-year-old boy. Here's a question. I know for sure I've seen news for other cases where they're searching at night, especially for children. They're out there searching at night. Is this some sort of weird policy for this department to say, you know, it's dark and dangerous. He's four. It'll be fine. And if that's true, why hasn't anyone questioned it and changed the policy? I think it's more like whoever is in charge is their call. Kind well, and it doesn't that question because I always had the impression that the reason the, the it was called off was I didn't hear it was a conservation officer who called it off, although a conservation officer could have said, hey, I don't think it's safe anymore. You know, you need to get everybody out of here. Right. They could have said that because I was under the impression that it was um, Lesenby who sh who shut it down. Yeah. But could have been from recommendations. Right. That he did so. And this is the other. So we had that the the all of these massive investigations of looking for somebody. Um, and obviously, because, you know, when they're in parks and in the water and stuff like that, it makes sense that your DNR officer is going to be involved in there. Um, but, you know, he uh, has been recognized with uh, awards and stuff like that for going and doing the searches and stuff. This is another one. The DNR officer discovers the body reported in Deer Creek. And as we go through this one, this one was back in 2015. And um, who do we have in this? We've got Toby Lesenby talking about, um, you know, the body being found. And Dolan here who says officers search the area between Hamilton Street Ridge and Old Street uh, Road 25, but a body was not found. So he was saying when the officers didn't find the body, but it was found by Dolan. They continued to check the banks and low-lying areas until the creek levels went down. And that's when they ended up finding him. So he was responsible for uh, 2015, 2019, and in 2022, um, bodies being located um, in the parks near the Wabash River and Deer Creek. So I find that interesting. Um, the other thing we obviously want to point out, and I know some of you know that, you may know it, you may not know it, is that, um, he was present during the press conference as well. In 2017, on the 22nd of February. Right. He, that is him there on stage. Um, and yeah, that was interesting. We, we, there's, there's some other stuff that we have found really interesting. Um, we just, we, we, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take full responsibility. I don't want to release anything that I'm not a hundred percent sure from and that we can't positively say without a second source telling something is correct. And so, um, but we have always been very curious and I don't know what the chat and everybody else thinks about that, but we have been very curious for the longest time of why did the DNR officer not think 
that they should bring this personally to somebody and mm -hmm. hand this tip and tell them, hey, this 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 guy's out here. He was there. Yeah. You know what I because mean? No matter what the Orion system is, no matter what it has out there, why well, would it well, not? Yeah, like if this DNR officer took the statement from Richard Allen, he took it at a time where the picture of Bridge Guy and the video of Bridge Guy wasn't released yet. It was released and still nothing was, was really said by him to connect the two. And then we see that he is in this press conference too. And still that connection is not being made by him to say anything. Quite confusing. Yeah. What do you think? Am I supposed to say something witty and on point right now? I think no. Justice had a Justice must opinion? have had this must she must have need this. Anyways, no, you can very, say something witty. We're all waiting. Um, too tired, man. Let the Red Bull hit. But you guys know how I feel about. Well, what do you think about what I just said? I think Dan Doolin and his behavior post, no, I'm not even going to say post. If you read up on Dan Doolin, he's a very interesting character and it leads to more like what the heck is going on with this fella questions than we can actually answer. All you can say is, well, here he is doing this. Why? Here he is doing this. Why? I don't know if we'll ever know, but we can speculate and, and, be frustrated. I think a lot of us are frustrated with him and what he did. And there she is. Okay. I'm muting myself. No, don't mute yourself. You can keep your unmuted. I was unmuted a minute ago. Here's the thing. I think that, I think that the problem is, I mean, obviously everything you say about this part is speculation, but yes. if you're the one who takes the information from somebody and then later you're like, okay, wait a minute. I mean, wouldn't this guy also think, wow, he kind of looks like bridge guy, right? He kind of looks like bridge guy. And remember, even after Richard Allen came forward, I know there's people who for some, I should keep my mouth shut, but there's people who think that Richard Allen is not guilty and that he's being set up and all this kind of stuff. Well, if you think that he's being set up or whatever, they still were showing the picture of Bridge Guy way afterwards. Then they went to the video of Bridge Guy because they're like, we still haven't identified who this guy is. So wouldn't DNR think, wait a minute, that's him. Wouldn't Richard mm -hmm. Allen think, wait a minute, that's me. That mm -hmm. is me crossing the bridge. Mm hmm. And I'm sure his comment was, holy shit, because remember, it was just within the day afterwards, they found the phone under Libby's body, which she could have been trying to hide it. She could have been whatever. Then they turn around, and as soon as it comes out, it doesn't come out as a video when we first get it. It's a stilled photo. And we don't know where they got it from to begin with. Yep. Yep. There, and so then that is where it makes me believe because of how small these towns are, because of everything that has happened in here, um, you know, everything that's gone on, you have to wonder, was there a purpose? Is there a reason? Why did he not bring that forward? He didn't have, if he could have brought it forward to say, Hey, uh, Lesenby, I thought it's this or legit. I thought it was this. And then if they didn't believe it, I mean, shit, wouldn't you, I'm sorry. Wouldn't you bring it to the FBI? I mean, what, you well, know what I mean? Yeah, you bring it that's up? the wouldn't point. Wouldn't you bring it to Doug Carter? We don't know if he tried to tell them and they just kind of didn't listen. But if he did do that, you should have tried harder. 
Well, yeah, so, you'd have to have a lot of people not listening. I mean, yeah. You just can't help if there's just a across the board level of apathy going on there, or is it a deeper, darker place that it takes us to? And I just again, guys, how guys we're just speculating. Like, he was a respected, like he's a respected person in the Delphi community. Like the roles that he is in and in the community, like I'm pretty sure he's, he's probably quite well known. So wouldn't his opinion be beneficial for law enforcement? Like wouldn't they want to listen to something he'd have to say? Do you know look what I mean? What we, I mean, but look at, we. He, they did used to listen to him. Look at the cases he solved. Yes, and in every news article, it's always, like, led by him. There's quotes from him, you know? So if he did approach anybody with the info on Richard Allen, I'm sure. I mean, I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't have listened at that point, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And he... Um, is a firefighter, an EMT, and right now he is running, what's his official title? Or do I need to pull that back up? He's a captain, um, you know, for the, D the DNR department, National Resources. And he's in Lafayette now, isn't he? Mm-hmm. That's quite a commute, isn't it? No, not too much. Uh-uh. Not that far. But you got to think, DNR usually doesn't sit in an office. No, it's more of an outdoors kind of role. So... Then it goes back to the big mystery of this was forward. We didn't see it. We didn't have it. It went to the DNR guy. It was even in the Orion system. So what do we believe? Did this just randomly Orion system pulled it out on September 21st? And it popped have, back out? Or we have it, to wonder why, though. Like, it wouldn't just do that for no reason if we didn't have more than just that statement if it was there the whole time right and hmm. would it be a recheck and a recheck out of everything would suddenly just pull richard allen up Maybe once they took Ron Logan off the tip list, um, it shot Ron, uh, Richard Allen up further. Maybe because when Doug Carter said, we're going to kind of start over and take this with a fresh new look here. But that and, was in 2019. Yeah, a new investigative strategy. Oh, was man, that was exactly. always in 2017, Richard, or Ron Logan would have been taken off of the list after they serve the probable cause after they mm -hmm. serve the probable cause they searched him they sent him to jail for 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 Other DUI charges. lying about all that Unrelated. shit mm -hmm. sent him to jail they didn't find any other shit on him they didn't find anything that connected him to it they let him go so he's out so all of a sudden 2019 we have the new press conference we have the new the new image we have the new now we're going down you know now yeah, we have the audio path down the hill. In this room, da da da. Or I may have talked to you, to you, or somebody you know. Well, I think in the end, there's going to be some finger pointing, and it probably comes down to human error or technological error, maybe, well, or both. Yeah, one could argue mm -hmm. that. A human wrote the technology, but let's not go there. Yeah, they dropped yeah. charges against Ron Logan, so he should have been taken out of the equation. Very or early. At least bumped. Very early. Yeah. On. By 2019, Ron Logan Things would have been off the list. 
Well, he was taken out of the equation, but not by people on the internet. Yeah, but I'm talking about the Orion system. If somebody's cleared, it should bump them to the side. But it shouldn't take them out altogether, because sometimes people are cleared and then they circle back around and or new yeah, evidence they surfaces. They wouldn't get like rid that. of any info they had. Right, right, they don't delete it. No, no, it should just... If somebody's cleared, I'm just arguing it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it didn't happen, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. Speculation. I just, I, I don't know. I just have a hard time wrapping my mind around that it was suddenly random. I, I, I pressed the button on September 21st and suddenly it was here. Unless, unless it wasn't entered in the system. So let's think of it this way. So the girls we talk about, the three girls who saw him, would they be entered into the Orion system? No, right? They're not. Why would they? They're not suspects. So maybe Richard Allen never got entered in the Orion system because they were, he was present there. Maybe it mm. never got entered. But doesn't it have underneath where it states, it states about the Orion system and like how they came across this about Richard Allen? Doesn't it have an, like a, a case number? It's like I'm sure a, someone. Any interview, like that paper I showed. Yeah. It's like a incident number or something, for lack of a better term, official term. Does that not mean it would have had to been recorded or no? I don't know. Mm, me neither. That's why I asked. That, I, I don't, that's the thing I don't know. If there's a suspect, if there's tips, if there's info, that all gets put in Orion. But if you're present there and you're considered maybe a witness, that's why I threw out if the girls would be in the system. They wouldn't be because you're not going to have them pulled forward as a potential suspect, right? You're, you're getting your tips. Your leads is coming from that. So would have Richard Allen's paper actually ever been entered in the system because it wasn't a tip from somebody? It was just an interview with somebody hmm. who they were assuming was there and saw nothing. Yeah. And I agree with you, Mark. I don't think he's a lone wolf either. Yeah, me neither. You know, it could be as simple as that they're trying to connect. Honestly, Keegan Klein, just even just as minimal as the setup, as allowing the setup using Anthony shots. Mm -hmm. Why do I believe that? Because you can't ignore that the police said they're still looking for somebody. They think somebody else could still be involved. You can't ignore that the Anthony shots talking to Libby beforehand. And, you know, even the girls themselves talk about when they witnessed him walking there, they said he was walking very deliberate to go. Like he had a purpose. Yeah, he had a purpose of he knew he was meeting somebody. He passed those other girls to get to him. He literally passed those other girls. Yeah. So, like, he had a target in mind. Which, how scary would that be? Or it was just too many. You know, there's, if he was looking for a random chance of taking someone, that was too many. And with, I guess that he figured he could but, handle two. I know, but, that's what I mean, though. If you're going to do that, maybe on your own to two girls, why wouldn't you do it to three? 
too much to handle. So I'm going to really blow, I'm going to bring this up and this is so not like me, but this is total, total speculation. And I'm probably going to blow their minds that I'm even going to bring this up because I have brought it up in our discussions, but I usually don't bring it up on the show. What, you know, lots of times I was puzzled by why would Richard Allen go ahead and go through with it, right? That was kind of a thing of he, he knows he was seen. Um, he's, you know, he's trying, he's trying to get there. It's the middle of the day. Why would he like so be determined and stuff from that? Now, we all, most people know there are other people that were there that day. And I've always wondered why. Um, we haven't seen them all. So I feel like they could be end up on a probable cause maybe for in a different person that they've seen. I don't know, maybe the guy all in black. Um, but what if the reason Richard Allen wasn't so worried about it is because there were other people there to watch. So this is total speculation to watch, to make sure nobody else would come by. You know, when you think about the other cars that were out uh, parked at the CPS building and stuff like that. And I know this is wild out there. Trust me, this is I normally do not. Um, you know, I think that. You know, he could have felt also comfortable, obviously, because he'd been there before. We know he'd been there before showing that his. uh you know, that his daughter was there before just makes me sick to my stomach to even think about. Um, but I don't know. What if there was other people there that were supposed to make sure he wouldn't get caught? And that's mm -hmm. why he didn't leave. Possibly. We don't know. You know, because sure have a flashing speculation sign going on the screen right now <laughs> because it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. I like rabbit holes. But yeah, I, that's why that's why I warn them. I normally don't. I normally don't do that. We I like normally don't bring up the possibility of speculation. But, you know, they talk about all these other vehicles and cars that were parked out near the CPS building. Yes. Maybe they, they were parked out there to watch if any other cars would pull in or somebody else or, you know what I mean? He had a comfortableness of being there, obviously. Or to wait in a certain location, maybe. Yep. I mean, I will say that, and I know that's a big, big giant speculation of that. Um, and I'm not saying that my mind, go, mind goes there. I mean, I do feel that there is a possibility he could have, had the girls be going going down uh, down that hill and stuff like that because he already knew exactly where he was going to take them. He already had, who knows, is there somebody waiting down there for the girls to meet up with them? Don't know. Always wondered how he would have taken over both the girls when the FBI states that, the, that they didn't fight, which I'm like, you know, a natural yeah. thing would be for you to fight and stuff in there. But then, you know, we had somebody. Do, up, yeah, they do mention the fact uh, that they have he had a gun, but the girls obviously were were killed in a different way. Right. So did so did he bring a gun and a knife? I mean, I know they searched for the knife, but do we all believe he brought a gun and a knife? I don't know. Possibly he could. I mean, he could have. Oh, and he, he racks his gun to get their attention, puts the gun aside, pulls out a knife. I, just, I always get stuck there. Maybe I, I shouldn't, but I always get stuck there. If he's controlling him with a gun and he's by himself. Why does he change? Uh, yeah. Why? Maybe hmm. that's a part of, I hate to say this word, but like fantasy where... A sharp object is involved. Yeah, know? but it's the logistics of um, putting the gun aside and getting the knife. Yeah, you know, it's just the 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 flow of the situation. I, I'm still working on on getting over that because to me, that's one of the things that point towards more than one person. You know, 
but the only way I get around specialists. It, I mean, I, I, I believe there definitely could be more than one person. I, cause I feel like that person could have been the one who brought a knife. Then they sat there and had it happened. The only way I get around, even though I feel like there is more than one person, the only way I get around that is when I had somebody before who we talked about and they said about the possibility that the girls would have possibly been knocked unconscious. Now, that's the only thing that can get me there because that would explain why there was no fighting, right? If some, if suddenly somebody, you know, hit, and God forbid, you know, but they hit, they hit him over the head, the girls go unconscious or, or, or let you, let's say even strangled them, think they're unconscious or that they did something. And now suddenly what's going to happen to them he, he can have control over two girls because they're unconscious. So that's the only way I can get there. Yeah. That. And still, it's like hard to imagine like doing that to one while the other one is just there. You know, I don't know. Can we look at what Fig says about the Anthony Shots thing? Why if we looked it? at, well, okay. He's speculating that, and I know some of us feel interested about that, you know, but he thinks that they could have invited Anthony Schatz out to the bridge. You know what can make, makes that almost sound like it fits is when they were talking to Keegan and he, we thought, acted surprise, surprised about Anthony Schatz interacting with the girls. Okay, so that kind of, to my mind, quickly, that fits. But if that's true, Fig, won't um, law enforcement have copies of what the conversation was and the times and they would be able to see what the interactions were? And if that's true, are they just keeping that information to themselves for now? I don't think they have it because I don't think they got that phone. The phone that had the info with Anthony shots of whatever, at least... Keegan Klein was doing was deleted. Was that, that the microwave? That he didn't bring till two days mm -hmm. later. The microwave yeah, phone. The microwave. <laughs> now, the phones with Richard Allen, I don't think is going to be having, unless he's an idiot. Um, Anthony shot stuff in it. They could, they could try to check if they can connect to have any type of communications, any stuff like that. Find out usernames he had, other things that he went by and connected it. You know, remember the late shout out about um, Yubu, about the yellow app. That didn't happen until to April of 22. Um, why? Something mm -hmm. was found there that they said Anthony Schatz was using the yellow app. Yeah. And it was mentioned briefly. Um, apparently, they were going to investigate in France. Yep. And we never oh, yeah. heard anything, anything else. JSP. Yes. Refresh my memory. Is yellow app one of those apps that erases conversations after X amount of time? And so there's there wouldn't nothing, be proof. There's there's nothing it's recording whatsoever. It is not recording. Okay. Even the videos that kids would do to show once the video is done, it's over. Now, yeah. I now let me say this. If you're if I'm watching your video though, I can record it. Right? I can record it yeah. and keep it. But as far as that you you're making a live video with your friends, I can't I can't go back and see it after it's over. It is not kept. Hello, Darren. Yeah, I think with, I think with that, with Keegan Klein, I mean, 
I just don't think that they have the info from Keegan because of that phone. If they would have went in during that search warrant, the initial search warrant, to make sure they got all his devices and, and got that particular device, I think this case would have been solved very quickly. And it could have been all kinds of reasons. Lots of CSAM people sit here and depending on the extreme of it, some of the CSAM people, instead of just images, they will do lots of things where it turns into an actual sexual assault that they try to meet with somebody, kind of that first level, all the way up to as, as high as level of, of, you know, even kidnapping and, and child sex trafficking. I mean, those CSAM uh -huh. people sit there and do that. And trust me, I don't think that Keegan Klein is a high level uh, CSAM ring by any means. He would definitely be the low man on the totem pole. But what tells me that he's really involved with that was the range of type of material that he had. If he has a, you know, they explain in there on his probable cause, what they find on his phones, they find images of a three-year-old girl. Yet he has images and stuff that are a teenager. You don't have that broad of a range normally from somebody who is looking at CSAM materials like that. Yeah, are they for customers? Um, the drop-off time wasn't 1 o'clock. Uh, let me see if I can find that quickly. Mm -hmm. It tells in the probable cause affidavit, um, and it tells when it's saying the vehicles the breakdown of the vehicles and when they were seen um, is where those are polygraph. Um, Cause it tells you exactly when you see Kelsey's vehicle drive in to drop off the girls. Um, I know somebody said earlier it was one o'clock, but it was just after it was after one. Yeah. The, the one that they just released doesn't unfortunately mention when Kelsey's car is seen. But that first PCA they released, I get, was it a PCA? Yeah, that first thing they released where they with when they were talking about um, RA, they that mentioned the time they saw Kelsey. This one that we're talking about, unfortunately, mentions what um, it mentions when Betsy Blair's car was seen. And I, that's the only one in this one that mentions times for sure that it showed up on a camera. And we'd have to look back at the other document to see what time they're saying Kelsey was seen on the camera. Yeah. And if you go back to the video of um, that we did about putting the puzzle pieces together, uh, we, we show all of that. Um, all of that with the time and and where we get it from. Yeah, I think we should go. It'd be cool to go back online. into a timeline and add this Betsy Blair's information because I don't, we only heard her name, well, just recently when they released that. Yeah, we, we, as we took the, the one that we did back then, as we've received any, any of the news clips, uh, any press, press conferences that were held, all the probable cause affidavits. Everything from that, we put that together in the puzzle pieces, and then we did the time and we did the full timeline of the as things happened as they were provided then. Yeah. Um, and then we as we received names. I mean, we even included Ron Logan's probable cause affidavit in that info just for the fill-in would be there for anybody who was still trying to hang on about Ron Logan as well. So yeah. and to show the timeline. But we have talked about going ahead and, and kind of maybe, do, again, doing an update on that because, uh, you know, with, with the different names as, as people's added, it's it's also interesting. I mean, plus all the crap that's happened with the continuation and stuff of the case and everything else that's going on and stuff from it. But, I mean, I, I have a hard time now not believing, um, you know, I... I, I God bless everybody for their, you know, own opinions. We respect that. But I mean, now with Richard Allen, um, you know, telling his wife, telling his mom, 
I'm sorry. I mean, and, and that it's, you know, five to six times he said it, a mental breakdown you have in this, in a particular episode from there, you don't have it that you've had it a million times after you suddenly started participating in recreational activities, after you start doing crossword puzzles, after you sud- you're taken off of the suicide watch list, that now suddenly you're going to confess to your mom. And I, honestly, in my opinion, too, I feel like if you finally told your wife, that's kind of a big deal. Maybe he finally got to the acceptance of, you know, they caught me, they found me and, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell her the truth. I'm going to come clean because mm. especially he's seeing what the, the defense is giving to them, which the defense had already said, that's why we're not having a trial right till January of 2024, which to be honest, in my opinion, I don't think we go that long. I think, I think they will come back, especially if they come back and they say in the lab work they did, they find DNA of the girls in his car. It doesn't matter where in that car, that DNA in the car, because you cannot clean a car completely out the blood. Anybody following true crime, you know (laughs) that blood is hard to get rid of. And, and especially with the technology not. we have available now to extract DNA evidence, absolutely. And once they have that, it's over. And I think they'll go to him and say, Okay, you have this, you come clean, tell us exactly how it happened, exactly how it was set up. And anybody and everybody who was involved and we'll make sure, you know, no death penalty. And maybe we send you to a little bit nicer prison than the prison Mm. you're in right now. Possible. Yeah. Bye, Jinx. See you later. I need groceries too. I wish I knew. I tell her to go get me some. Uh, but I, I just feel like he'll uh, he would do that to be to be done, to have the trial over with, to you know, I mean, uh, you know, who knows? But I, I just I just don't think he's gonna want to sit here and keep going through the trial. And I don't even know if the it, honestly if the defense team after that point. Are they going to try to still fight for him if they once they find DNA in the car? I mean, the only time that they would not worry about it, honestly, is if the judge does say you did not have enough probable cause to go get those items from his home. Participating in... But they only need to charge him with kidnapping. Right. That, and that's what the main charge is. It's kidnapping that, that led to the murder. Mm-hmm. I, that, I, that the, I agree, Fig. Yep. I've already went through this stuff, and I bet you have, Fig. Like, And all of us probably have a little bit, at least. Just picking this apart. You know, People get mad, like, well, why are you still looking at that and and questioning all this stuff? Well, because I'm looking at it. I'm going to see, like, how much of this stuff I've found that the defense attorney brings up. Um, I don't know. Are you guys kind of hoping it goes to trial, though? I mean, I kind of am I supposed to feel bad that I'd rather it go to trial than do a plea deal? No, I'm the only one. I mean... I kind of want it obviously done as quickly as possible, but on the other hand, I want it done thoroughly and correctly. So. And I I agree with Michelle. I think if he's going to be afraid for his family. Well, I think the other thing we have to worry about is the longer they wait for him. I mean, no matter what, we all know. They have to keep him safe from himself and from others. If something happens to him on his own, 
or by somebody else in prison, we will never know the truth. There, there, there will be, we'll never know exactly how everything happened. And if they make a deal with him, then I feel like if he did it, he may do it on his family's behalf to be like, let me just get it done with. And it's over with. I mean, I feel like also for the family, it would be better than this being dragged out forever as well, because they're sitting here under a drag order or sorry, gag order that they can't say anything. And they're going to sit here for years listening to everything going on and back and forth about all of it. Either way, they're going to have to move his wife and stuff. They're going to have to move, I would think. I mean, just living in a small town and everyone would be. Well, they are. At the very least, looking at you. But I mean, how many people are going to, I don't know, how many people are going to want to still be friends and all that stuff that his wife will be go is probably already going through. So I would imagine she's going to move. Well, well, I mean, that, house, house. that house is almost gone anyway now. They already they already had an offer on it. Yeah. Fully so. furnished, even with clothes in it still. I think that the I think that's the other reason that the gag order was put, because I mean, think about it. As soon as the defense team came forward, they were already talking to everybody and trying to bring the information of, oh, they didn't have enough information. Oh, how did this come forward? You know, and not, not that we weren't all asking the same kind of question, but you know, they, they were putting as much doubt out there in the media as they could. And honestly, that's kind of the reason I sat here and thought as well, how did, uh, you know, I, I was surprised they let the witnesses' names all come forward fully, first and last names, and the information that the judge released. All of this stuff got thrown out there. I think it would be horrible for the families to see the pictures of the girls. I do too, Polygraph. I mean, the details and stuff that would come out, to have to sit in trial and to hear whatever setup was, whatever communications were, whatever was going on. And we do know whatever, whatever that, Ke that Keegan Klein was trying to give to them. They, they, they don't, he was even saying, right. They don't believe from his interview with the murder sheet. But I mean, honestly, even if Keegan Klein was saying like, let's say Keegan Klein was saying, yeah. And so-and-so is here. And or was involved, they ain't got to believe that. They're not going to believe a dang word he says at all, ever. It gives them something to gives Ellie something to dig deeper into, though. Gives them a lead. Hey, did you see how you're stuck with me now? I'm sorry. I did see. Yeah, let's let's talk about. <laughs> Is it true that they oh, yeah. stole something from a neighbor? when the police finally got reason to search. Oh, the whole lawn tool thing or something that he stole tools from a neighbor that was going around, but no, cause they called him in and then got, yeah, there. So he got called in on October 13th. So, so we saw the, the info that, uh, legit had the info on September 21st from the Orion system supposedly pulled this tip out, gave the tip. October 13th, they re-interview Richard Allen. And when, when they talk to Richard Allen and his wife, he basically confirms everything he said before. And then that gave them uh, been able to write for the search warrant because they said everything he just said that he has and his clothes that match and blah, blah, blah. We can go find it in his house right now. And that's why they issued the search warrant on that same day sorry catching up with chat here I'm just making sure I didn't miss anybody
Yeah. But I think that um, trying to figure out legitimately how this Orion system kicked it out, I feel like that they covered themselves by re-interviewing um, re -interviewing Richard Allen. Because if they would have went just to search Richard Allen's house after getting the information that came out of the Orion system, I think that they would have had trouble proving the probable cause. But because I think that what helped them was the fact that we just saw this. We're going to go talk to Richard Allen. We're going to tell him it's because we saw this uh, discussion with the DNR officer. I believe it wasn't entered in there like a tip. I, I just feel like it was entered in there of, of a person who was present that day. Maybe that's why it was overlooked in that way. But whatever. Somehow something came forward to him. It doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. And then when, after they interviewed him, because he confirmed everything he said then, then that's when they said, we ha we want a warrant because all this stuff's in his house. His wife confirmed he owned the same clothing too. So, I don't know. I think it'll be, a. I think, I feel like it will go to, uh, in, probably end up in a deal. If they, if the judge does not throw out the info, does not throw out the probable cause affidavit, which I don't think they will because he re reset everything he said to the DNR officer. It's enough for probable cause. They got to go in probable cause. They got the search warrant. They did it. I don't think there's going to be, I don't think there's going to be a problem. Yep, I heard about Fig's interview with her. It was fantastic. It was a good interview, Fig. Are I'm surprised his channel? wife was still there. I'm surprised his wife found out in April, went physically to see him in May for the first time, she sees him in May and then shows up to court. I do too, Darren. We're, we're in that. We're in that, Darren. We just can't say anything right now. We think we found a connection, but we can't really say much right now. And, and you can't you can't have people from that town and area and not think they all don't know each other. I mean, everybody knows that if you look at Delphi, um, Peru, all those areas right there, you can't think that they don't know each other. Yep. Well, I think we covered all of that stuff. I can't show the other, the other thing. We are looking, we are, do have some more things. We do have other, we did want to tell you about, talk about, we find a little odd with the DNR officer. We found a little odd with the other materials that's in there. We wanted to tell you about the Orion system. If you uh, caught us here on the end, uh, at the beginning, we talk about what the system is, how the FBI uses it, that they give access to other areas on different level, federal, state, um, local, um, how it normally pops out of the system. Yeah. Of interview with him would be great. Yeah, I I think that um I think they 
I think that there's some people looking into that. I do believe that there are people looking into him as well. Definitely, if it if we are not aware of information that was purposefully not brought forth or not entered into the system, we'll I'm sure that they're looking at him. And they would know that, you know, obviously better than I. Or any of us. So if we get, like I said before, if we get confirmation of what other stuff that we know about it, we will share. We will go through that. We wanted to talk to you guys about this. Um, I will tell you, we do find it very interesting that right after when Keegan Klein was supposed to take his plea deal, there were some serious, serious uh, CSAM guys that went down. Um, this next uh, CSAM group I'm going to drop. Um, also, I have some stuff from um, Indiana Internet Crimes Against Children stuff to share that I'm going to do in the next video. I may also just kind of put it as its own little separate thing to let you guys know about as well. And um, share that interesting with you guys. But I feel like uh, the one reason that, you know, when Keegan Klein, they thought was going to do that, I thought that we're going to probably announce all these other people that they would have busted that were part of his stuff. Um, and I think they went ahead and, you know, pulled the plug on going ahead and arresting some of these guys that uh, that they were holding on. But I'll be covering those um, in our next CSAM video for you guys to see uh, and stuff like that. And um, uh, also we have info of that. I know you'll be shocked by this, but child trafficking has increased in Indiana. Um, and I think that's also because we've had the increase of people reporting CSAM. I don't know if that's a bad thing. I mean, I know a lot of people are like, oh, my God, I wouldn't want to live in Indiana because of all that. Well, be honest with you, you know, there's. There's a lot of people out there you may not be aware of. And because of this, because what I attribute to Libby and Abby, and um, I think will be their legacy, is that they brought this forefront, especially in Indiana, and created so much awareness mm -hmm. that um, it is it has brought people to be brave enough to step forward and to say mm -hmm. this is happening to them. Where a lot of people don't, a lot of the a lot of the girls and boys that happens to, they don't. So and really, to be fair to Indiana, it, it I bet you every state has its incompetent police, and it has maybe at least. It's not like Indiana has the has the run of pedo pedos, you know. If we did a deep dive into my state, it's probably a mess too, you know. So I think to be fair to Indiana. For people who are from there who are like, oh, come on, man, don't always pick us out. It's just because that's the case we're looking at, you know, because what you're finding, JSD, is these problems are worldwide. You know, trafficking is worldwide. Right. And there are no borders to see Sam. Right. Thank you, Internet. The big the, the big one that we covered, the worst one that I covered first as a spotlight was the guy from California. Yet, for some reason, he had 11 of his victims were out of Kokomo, Indiana, the most in one location. So then you have to go, why was Kokomo, Indiana, such a big location? And uh, we've had a lot of people busted from Kokomo and around that area. And Kokomo is very close to, it's not far from Peru and all of that. It's just kind of like that, that circle, kind of like that region area, right? Particularly there, we have had so many busted. And these guys aren't just the viewers of having it. They are producers of it. So, but I appreciate uh, you guys all being here with us today, going through um, some of this material. We were going to show some something else, but, you know, we didn't get the, the confirmation that we wanted on some of it. So um, when we can, we will show you. Um, but we, uh, we want to create the 
um, awareness of stuff for about what is going on. And like I said, you guys all know my bias. I know I have a bias. I feel like that the uh, Anthony Schatz, Keegan Klein connection is there. I can't, I, I just can't let that go. I can't let that go that I feel like that was part of the setup for this event to happen. And um, the, the brave, the bravery of those girls to, and, and to know that something was wrong, to have that feeling that something was wrong to start filming it. So, but I appreciate you all being here. Um, great people who drop by. Thank you. You know, um, Aspen for dropping in and thank you. Um, Fig for jumping in. Yeah. Thank all Darren. of you guys. Darren, Jean, Darren, Samantha, Michelle. Yeah. Thanks everybody. We had a great chat today. They were just saying the most amazing stuff and sharing information. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Jeez. Ray. All you got. Yeah. There were so many people in here. We appreciate all of you, Mark. Oh, let me get rid of the troll. Hi troll. You're late. Oh, I didn't see any troll. Did I miss a troll? Yeah. Sorry you sorry you missed the the uh show troll. <laughs> and Michelle, I'm glad you enjoyed it. We enjoyed having you here and you participating. Yes. And, and Kathy, Darren, that was our new person too. Yes, yeah. we were being silly when we first came in. We were cracking up laughing trying to get over here. And get started and stuff, guys. So we appreciate you. Um, we'll, we'll share uh, more stuff as we find it and get out there. I know I have some stuff that I'm working on with some other people. Um, yeah, I do too. I do too, Boost Mobile. I can't. I can't let that go that he's in, involved with some of it. I think we're going to learn that more. I. It, I was really hoping we were, I felt like we were going to find out another chunk after Keegan Klein's CSAM local charges, not federal, local charges were done. I felt like we were going to find out some more, but then that got delayed. So, um, but yeah, so we appreciate you guys being here. Kelt, thank you for coming up. want to say thank you to Mama Bear and to Paige and stuff for being up here too want to thank all of you guys for um, being here in the chat, participating with us, uh, sharing more with us. I know I've got some uh, info that I'll be doing with uh, some of the other shows that have invited about um, talking about uh, CSAM, child sex trafficking. I know I've had some shows invited on that. I'll let you guys know about that too um, as I go out there and share that information. But I really appreciate all of you. I appreciate you guys all caring about this case of these girls here in Indiana. And um, thank you. And thank you for making sure that justice is served daily. Please like and subscribe, guys. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye.